What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel, Pete's Carport. Today we're going to dive into a car that I haven't really touched a whole lot recently, and that is the 1986 420SEL. This is a W126 body chassis, and lately this car has just been giving me a little bit of troubles, and I want to sell it, so I needed to fix these little issues. Today we're going to tackle the issue of a high idle, and I believe I know exactly what's causing it because I just went and kind of searched around uh, the IAC or uh, idle air control valve. This is a very common issue for a high idle, so it was the first place I looked, and immediately I saw this wire coming completely out. So. When you have a high idle or an idle issue and you believe it might be the IAC, the best thing to do is start looking at all of the electrical connectors. So make sure that the connectors look good and um, and then go from there. So after uh, trying to put this wire back in here while I had it started, I wasn't going down on the idle and I was kind of frustrated because I thought I figured it out. Well. Let's go ahead now because I think I know what the issue is. It still is this wire here. So let me go ahead. I believe this got really dirty underneath here and there's no connection or this is just not reaching a connection in there. So let's go ahead, start the car up and we'll play around with that on there and see if we can get this thing to idle down and hopefully this will help one of you guys out there if you're searching for a high idle and what's causing it on your W126. Okay, so immediately you guys can hear it's idling quite high. In fact, it's idling close to 2,000 RPM. Now I've got the switch completely off, so let's go ahead and try to connect this side of it to where it goes. But that will allow me to then try to get this connection to work. Okay, you can see now idle went completely down. So now I know it's definitely due to that switch. So now what I want to do is rewire that switch, clean those connectors. I think the connectors are very dirty as well too. Uh, a lot of oil and stuff does get up in this area. And that kind of brings me to the next thing I want to do to this car. Let me turn the car off real quick. So I've got this car uh, I'm going to be putting up for sale. I know it's an awesome car, beautiful, original paint, and uh, it's got amazing interior that just needs a little bit of work on it, but this car just sits, and I don't like cars to sit around. I just don't have a need for it right now, and I have another project on the way, so I need to make room. Uh, cash flow will obviously be good, too, to help me out with this project. So I want to get the most amount I can for this, because this car is definitely worth a lot more uh, than what it would be just the way it is. So I've never cleaned this engine bay and I would love to clean this whole thing up, maybe do something with um, the air box here, get all of this cleaned out. I've also got a really good idea. I've ordered in some uh, ceramic coating and this paint is all original like I said but it is drying out towards the rear and I'm wondering if we can get this thing cleaned down really really good like I did when I first got it, get it all clay barred uh, perfectly looking paint and then we can go ahead and put a ceramic coat on it and uh, just clean the rest of it up really really good and fix the little knickknacks uh, coming in the near future I've got to fix the uh, there's a couple things wrong with the window so the front windows I believe I need to change out the motors and the rear window uh, there's a bracket that comes basically it's a riveted piece that goes on there I ordered in the new pieces I think the riveted uh, I ordered in the new pieces and I want to do a video on that so we're gonna be replacing uh, that part that goes and I'll put it on the screen exactly what the part is now uh, but we're gonna be replacing that part in the rear window because the rear window works fine the regulator and the, uh, the, the you know the motors working and all that stuff so we don't have an issue there it just won't go up and down because the arm is just freely moving and it's not connected to the bracket that allows the window to go up and down. But we'll go into that. And uh, please let me know in the comments anything else you guys would like to see on this W126 before it leaves. Uh, I do have quite a few different rims that I had planned on putting on here. If you guys want me to test out rims, if you have an idea of, uh, of what you like to see, I have some... Um, AMG mono blocks that are 18 inch that would need spacers. Uh, I've got the chrome rims 
off of uh, the 500 uh, SL over there that looked really nice on this car when we put them on. Those are 18s. And then uh, Zay's got the uh, these really cool 18s here that I think will slap right on there. So I even thought about buying those from him. They could be a pretty cool look. But let me know what you guys want to see on this car before it heads out. Uh, I'm not in a rush to sell it because I do want to fix everything up and get the most I can for it. Who knows? Maybe I'll end up keeping it if... I fall back in love with it and find a use for it. Or if any of you guys are interested in this car, uh, let me know. Right now I'm looking to get about $4,000 for it. Uh, it's worth a lot more in my opinion. It's got working AC and a lot of stuff done to it. And it's a gorgeous, gorgeous car and a very nice running car, especially once we get that IAC uh, electrical part figured out. Um, really haven't had to do a whole lot to it. It had 128,000 miles on it when I got it. And uh, the odometer basically uh, stopped turning almost right when I got it. So uh, documented of what I've done on it, maybe 2,000 miles. So uh, a very low mileage car for the year. The brakes have all been redone and there's a lot of stuff that uh, is documented done to it on the AC and so forth. So just let me know if you guys are interested in it. Shoot me a message and I'll send you my email and uh, let me know what you guys would like done to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that soldered up, start it back up and see if we can get it to idle right out. So I just wanted to show this. I think I know why it wasn't working. It looks like definitely some oil or something got down in there and is creating uh, a basically a resistance against this working. So I'm going to clean this down really, really good. I'm going to use um, some electrical cleaner, wipe it all down, get the posts wiped down and cleaned really well, and then uh, try to get this back in there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to solder it, take this apart and re-put it in there, but we'll get it and I'll fill you guys in. So a quick update, she's all fixed up. What I had to do is really clean all of this down really good. I even took some sandpaper and sanded down the prongs. So if you have an issue, you might want to look into doing that. And then I was able to get the wire snapped back in there. So I didn't even have to solder it. And it, I think it's in there really good. At least it's holding idle. And I know if anything happens to it in the near future, I know where to look. So once again, guys, hopefully this helps somebody out out there who's having an idling issue on one of these beautiful W126s. My name's Pete. This is Pete's Carport. I'll catch you guys on the next episode and you have an awesome day.